evening. Aren't you dying to know what's under this little white towel? You'll have to wait and see. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Lent this evening. Uh, we are moving through Lent, talking about how your daily work meets your faith, so how your faith guides you in the work you do when you are not gathered here together. Welcome to you on Facebook Live. There is a link for the music and for the hymn we will sing later on, so I hope you can open that and be a part of worship that way. Thanks to our speaker tonight, Michael Stevenson, who will share a bit about work and retirement and um, his daily work then and now. So thanks to Michael. The only thing you need to know, we always tell you, is the psalmody on page four is where things get a little bit confusing. So if you turn to page four, you'll see there's a group one line and then a group two follows right after. So I'd love for this piano side to be group one, because I know you've got some singers over there. And then we'll be group two over here. I'll lead group one, but you'll be group two. So if you fall off the music somewhere, just sing anything you want, and we will all end at the same time. Let us worship God together. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. now for it is evening let your light scatter the darkness
us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. I invite our speaker, Michael Stevenson, to join me up front. Sit right by me in the mystery item. You got it? There. <laughs> well, you've been up here a lot of times, but oh, yeah. never like this. Be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> so Michael and I met a couple of weeks ago and had a conversation, and then I put it down on paper, so you'll see us sort of following a script. I guess I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to follow a script. <laughs> you're a little unpredictable. All right, so tonight I get to sit with one of my favorite guys who's got many names throughout his life. He is... Mike to some of you, or Michael, he's Mr. Stevenson to some of you, or Steve-O, or my favorite, Martin Luther, because <laughs> a few years ago, you did us a great gift and you shaved your mustache and dressed up as Martin Luther on a Reformation Sunday, and you've reti been retired now for almost three years, yes. so tell us what you did before you retired. What I did, I was a teacher, choir teacher, drama teacher, a church choir teacher, a substitute organist. Before the, all of that, I was a farmer and rancher. Oh, yeah. Uh, been involved with charitable organizations, involved with the college, drama and music departments. And uh, I started teaching in Dickinson in 1981, <laughs> 38 years. On your last day of school, when you retired, you walked out of the building one last time. What was that like? Vacant. I would, uh, the next day I was all set to come to school, and several times, truth, truth, mm -hmm. I was driving down state and I would turn in at school because it was time to turn in. At, mm -hmm. Automatic. And, uh, I would feel stupid and make it cash-wise. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm better now. <laughs> and I was also in the process of throwing things away that, at that time that I collected. And that was, so there were a lot of memories going on at that time and uh, going, do I need to keep this? Does this give me joy? <laughs> yes. It all gave me joy. <laughs> 38 years of teaching is a lot. That amounts to a lot of props as a drama teacher. So as you sorted through all of those things that you collected, that must have been like traveling back in time. What was that like? Oh, so much stuff that, that had gotten. I, I'm a hoarder because of my drama side. And so every shelf was packed with things and they all had had memories, and then there, it got to be a tradition that the senior class would always give me a huge picture with all of their individual pictures on it. And so I hauled home 28 some years of those pictures, and uh, they have now all been converted to a book. I have a lot of frames if you need any. <laughs> uh, but I did not have the wall space for all, all of those. So and uh, programs and gifts the kids had given me and all kinds of things. So in all those years of sorting, or all those years of stuff and sorting it, was there anything that stands out to you as you remember the sorting work? Yes. Okay. The year was 2008. <laughs> Picture it. Uh, when we would drive to various things in Grand Forks and Fargo, we usually stopped in Jamestown for a rest stop, and the service station we would stop at always had donuts and things, and there was always one green muffin. 
and we wondered if it was the same green muffin every time we stopped or if they replaced it. So one time we bought it and it started to live on the piano in the choir room. And throughout the year, it sat there just as happy as it could be. It got decorated for Christmas. It got decorated for Valentine's. It got decorated for Easter. Uh, it got decorated for prom, and somebody else brought in another little green muffin for it to have for its prom date. <laughs> but that little green muffin didn't work out so well. But the original green muffin <laughs> is 14 years old this year. <laughs> It, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> it's not perfect anymore. <laughs> it ages well. It does, it does. So, uh, if so, any of you would like a taste, you're welcome. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it couldn't be purple, it'd be more lenty. It's like a Pentecost muffin. You can color it. <laughs> Won't hurt it, I'm sure. <laughs> But that, so that, that came home with me and now I'm looking for someone from that class to give it to so that it stays in town. I'm not sure Montana's ready for it. <laughs> well, in the Old Testament, there's a really quick read, a book called Ecclesiastes, and that's the Hebrew word for teacher. The teacher's book, or Ecclesiastes, is best known for the words in chapter 3, which you've probably heard, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. These are the teacher's good words. They've stuck around even longer than the green muffin. <laughs> you have all had teachers in your life at one time, so you're acquainted with the wisdom of different teachers. The daily work of a drama and choir teacher is particularly unique. Talk about the unique work of being a drama and a choir teacher. Uh, it really fits in very well with the to everything there is a season, a, a time for this and a time for that. That choir and drama are finite. Is that the, the word I want to use? It. You work all quarter towards a concert. You give the concert. You put the music away. You work on a play for six, seven weeks, you finish the play, you take down the sets, you put the costumes away, it's gone, it's done. It's time for the next play. So it's, we're very cyclical that way. It, it, yeah. it's, we've gotten here, now we're gonna go back here. We're gonna go back here, now we're gonna go back here. Mm -hmm. And it's, there were a lot of students I think that felt, it was very sad for them to finish, but they knew that there was another thing coming, that the next day there would be auditions again and it would all start all over again. Mm -hmm. And they, would, they, those that want to would, would home in on that and then they would hang around. It, 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 the theater and the, the choir room became safe places for a lot of kids that were not comfortable in other places. And the, the students that were there were good to them. And, and they, so they, they felt safe there. And, like sacred space. Yeah. yeah. Did you always know you wanted to be a teacher? I was trained to be a teacher. Okay. I became the teacher that my father always wanted to be. Oh. He wanted to be a choir teacher, and then he got married and took over my mom's farm. And uh, yeah. he did try to finish one time. But it, uh, he did teach in a little town in Montana for a while, and he always helped. <laughs> gorgeous baritone voice, some of you have heard him sing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, so I was raised up to be what, what he wanted to be, and then my brother was raised up to take over the farm, so I didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. As you look back, can you see some of the people God put in your life and guided you on this path toward being a teacher? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, my parents. Definitely my parents. But there were teachers other teachers all the way along. My choir teacher in high school was a, a power to reckon with. Uh, college teachers, 
other teachers that I've met along the way in, in other areas that I, I envy and want to be like and have taken things from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you started teaching in, your first <coughs> teaching job was in? Hingham and Rudyard, Montana, okay. K through 12 music, band, and choral in both schools. Okay. You ended up in Beach? Yeah. Okay. And then your second stop was Dickinson. How did that job come your way? Uh, I had connected with, they used to have a summer theater program down here, and I'd gotten to know some of the theater people. And so they had asked me to come and help, and so I'd gotten to know a lady who was in charge of that. And a choral position opened up at the high school. And uh, she said, oh, you, we need to get you down here. We need to get you there. And I had already signed a contract in, in Beach to, to stay there. But I said, well, I'll come down and, and talk to you. And uh, at that point, I was helping with costumes of the Medora musical. So I, I had to go and do the laundry for the Medora musical. And then I was going to Fargo for something. And so I said, I'll stop in. So I stopped in, and the, the person that I met was the principal, Mr. Howell, who was the brother of the grandmother of many of my students in Rudyard. Okay. All the Weirs were connected to the Howells. Okay. And uh, so he said, oh, I've heard about you. We don't need to interview you. Easy peasy. Yeah. Here's the job. Mr. Braun is showing the room. <laughs> yep. And I said, well, it, uh, I have signed a contract. And, uh, it looks wonderful, but I can't break that contract. It's, and he says, well, if you can't, we'll save it for you till next year. Nice. So that, that was nice. And, uh, and it was it, it, sort of a funny connection, because when I went to Beach, I met the principal in Beach, his first teaching job had been at the one room school just north of our ranch in Gilbert. So he knew the, the names and we knew lots of people in common. So mm -hmm. A good old boy into both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see a path of God yes. guiding yes. you. Yeah, I think so. I and then you so. taught for many years. Can you say what might have been your favorite part of teaching? Rehearsal. I, I just love to to work through things and, and hear when things click and they're right and you see the kids go, oh yeah, instead of, <laughs> <laughs> that was most of the time. <laughs> but, uh, or it, when they would come and, <laughs> sorry head feet, when they would come and tell you the name of the piece they wanted to do instead of the green ones. <laughs> <laughs> And you did that one? Yes. Okay. yes. Nice, very so, nice of you. But it, uh, and rehearsal with drama, to, just to, to see it, the little steed of theater start to bloom and, and finally be there and then mm -hmm. disappear. And in the, all that time, kids created community. You helped create mm -hmm. community yeah. with kids as They all workers. became very close. Yeah. And at the end, for kids, what was it like for them to strike the set? Traumatic. They'd go in and take everything down and we'd replaint the stage floor black and they'd sit there and wouldn't want to leave because that's where they'd been for six weeks. Yep. And uh, lots of tears. And, uh, yeah. yeah. But they knew the next day was auditions again. So yeah. We're off and running again. So that makes me, are you okay with the script? I think so. I don't know where we are now. Yes, I thought I had lost you. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so as I listen to you, it's clear you go th you've gone through a lot of endings and beginnings being a drama teacher. So you've gotten really good at beginnings and endings. How does that relate maybe to ending teaching? I think I'm as bad as the kids. It, okay. uh, I don't like strike. I don't like it to end, but that has become kind of what my life is. I know that the, this ends, this, we're going to have a new beginning, we're going to have a new beginning. There's a new audition tomorrow, there's a new audition tomorrow. So. Yeah. Okay. 
So what do you think is the next thing for you now that you are settling into retirement? Or, or maybe what has been the next thing for you? As you've retired? I suppose moving will be the next big thing for me to, to move home and start to help take care of my parents. So in July, that's your plan? I hope to be moved by July. Yeah. Okay. The, and the, where I'm moving to, the community theater in Haver does 10 shows a year. So okay. there'll be plenty to do. They need church musicians. Uh, my brother and sister are so happy. They've been driving my folks all the time. They said, you just sit in Dickinson and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will help out there too. Okay. Well, you'll be a blessing there too. One last question as you look back at these years of teaching using the gifts God's given you. If your career was a play, what might it be called? King Lear. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, careful. It's around the next corner. Okay. How come? It's around the next corner because it's always a new start. It's always a new start. I love it. So holding on to those words, I'd like you to find your red hymnal. We did this last week too, but it's the bigger of the two red books. And on page 82 at the front, where the numbers are on the bottom, you'll find a prayer. Uh, called Those Entering Retirement. And you're already underway retiring, but you can all think of somebody you know who's retiring soon, and you can pray for them as we say this prayer, knowing that life is full of beginnings and endings and endings and beginnings. So we're going to hold in prayer anybody on your mind who might be retiring, and you can say that person's name in the name spot. You ready? So let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant, Michael, who has enriched this community and brought gladness to friends and family. Now bless and preserve him at this time of transition. Day by day, guide him and give him what is needed. Friends to cheer his way and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling him. By your Holy Spirit, be present in his pilgrimage that he may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Steve-O, Michael, Martin Luther, whoever you are. We're going to sing together the song that's on the screen. Never. <laughs>
or back in your booklet on page 10 or on the screen. and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you may. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. be seated. Continue with the offering. If you are worshiping online, we encourage you to share a gift online on St. John's website to support the ministry of St. John. Your gifts make worship happen and make service happen through this place.
Let us pray. Generous God, you walk alongside us to guide the way. You fill our lives with signs of encouragement, and you show up through people. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all to walk with you, in Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are welcome at this meal of mercy. You'll come up the center aisle. I'll hand you a chunk of bread. You can take a glass of wine or grape juice from the tray that Jesse is holding in the middle. The clearer liquids are the juice. And if you need a gluten-free wafer, let me know. You can make your way to your seat up the side aisle. We'll commune this side first. Once you've all communed, we will come your way next. If you're worshiping online, I encourage you to share bread and juice or wine with one another. And if you're alone, these are words just for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to this meal of mercy. Come just as you are.
As one of you pointed out, we almost had to use the green muffin for communion. <laughs> I didn't. Let us pray. Tender and merciful one, at your feast you fed us. We brought you nothing, yet you turned our emptiness into joy. Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to our everyday work, walking alongside friend and stranger, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Let's stand, and you're on the last page, the back page of your bulletin. Let us bless our God. Remember the poor.